Hello and welcome back to the Maccas Talk Hockey Podcast, a podcast where me and my brother Charlie talk about English ice hockey, specifically the National Ice Hockey League. And we've got a very, very special episode. We're doing our NIHL League predictions. And me and Charlie are also joined by a special friend of ours, Dan. Dan, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, how's it going? Yeah, not too uh, bad. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um you know, just glad to come on. Really, I know I've I've been talking to you a lot, like yeah. since you've been starting it. So you're a new, you're a new Swindon me. fan. <laughs> no, only on loan. Don't tell anyone. Uh, nah, you're uh, you're a fan of the Basingstoke Bison, and uh, you're going to join us big, a lot on fan. lot on episodes this uh, this season because um, you're going to try and get to a lot of games around the league, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I've got a lot planned um, to try and get around. So hoping yeah. I'll be able to do it. <laughs> yeah so the order we're going to do it in we're going to give our one to 11 of team predictions and then i've got five quick fire questions which we're asking everyone on their predictions we've also got my dad coming on at some point and we've also got our friend martin as well who's going to hop on um but yeah I'll, I'll let them know when uh when that gets edited in should we kick it straight off then um with we're going to start with my predictions then we're going to do dan's and then we're going to do charlie's and let me tell you this this is probably the hardest <laughs> Um, predictions I've ever had to do in hockey. Did you find it hard, lads? Nope, easy. Uh, I've been changing mine throughout like the weeks. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was set on one, and then I keep changing it. Just one or two teams every now and again. No, yeah. it's tough. Yeah. It is tough, but um... I've I've had to change mine um, so many different times, and literally five minutes before the podcast, I had to change it again. So uh, yeah, there's been uh, one round of preseason games whilst we're recording this. There's another round uh, this weekend, literally tomorrow. Um, but I wouldn't look into preseason too much. Um, so shall I start with my eleventh place team? So at rock bottom, and this is when I put them bottom. I'm not saying they're going to be absolutely terrible. Um, same with any team really, but I've got the bees at the bottom. My reasoning for that, they haven't got a third import. Um, they did actually look defensively all right against Swindon at the weekend, but I just think with Antonov not being able to travel to all the games as well, no third import, I think they could struggle offensively and missing welcome as well. Um, and I think they've got a lot of grinder players, but at the end of the day, you're going to need points to beat the big team. So I've got bees at the bottom. At number 10, I've got the Bristol Pitbulls. Again, they've made some good additions, but I just think the firepower and the overall defensive depth as well, I don't know if it's enough. And there's a question mark on the goalkeeper as well. Would you say, lads, he's only young, isn't he? And he's going to be doing a full season? Yeah, I yes. agree. It's going to be a lot of pressure for him, I think, especially yeah. coming into a very like high standard NIHL league as well. Yeah, um, definitely. And then this is probably the hardest spot for me um, out of the whole predictions. It's the ninth spot. It's the team who I think's just going to miss out on playoffs. And I think it will be very tight from ninth all the way up to six, I'm going to say, from ninth to sixth on my predictions. Um, but at number nine, and this, from, this is probably going to eat my words, but I'm going with Telford. Um, I just think they're going to miss Herman. They haven't got Silverthorn. Um, they have got some good players. They brought in Ferguson. They got McKenzie as well. They got some good youngsters. I, after saying this, I, I don't know, but I'm going to just stick with Telford. I'm going to go Telford at number nine, just missing out. And at number eight, I've got Solway just getting it. Now, a lot of people online, lads, are saying that Solway are going to finish top three. I've seen people say top two. Um, <laughs> can they get that high, lads? I'm not no. sure. I, I, don't I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think there's even an argument with that. Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I was just be... they do. They've done. They've done very well, but um, it's a big adaption phase for their younger players. Yeah, their NIHL one players to come into this league, and I think it just takes a bit of time to establish yourself in this league. And I think they'll struggle in away games, and they'll have games where they get shocked. And so yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But I've got them in at eighth. I have got them making the playoffs. Um, neither of the new teams last year, Hull or Bristol, made the playoffs. So it'll be interesting to see if Solway can do it this year. It wouldn't surprise me if we do actually see Telford sneak into that um, uh, playoff spot above Solway. At seven, I've got Raiders. Um, the reason I've got Raiders at seven, they were going to get that import deal. Have they got another one lined up, Dan? I yeah, they do. Yeah, they got. I, I thought they were going to be announcing this week, but yeah, they've definitely got one on the way. Yeah. Definitely, anyway. 
I I think defensively, I just think obviously there's a shortage of D men in the league. They've, their attack is unreal. They brought in Milton, they brought Norcliffe, and I don't think they have any problems going forward. They've got a lot of good depth as well. But defensively, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to handle a lot of the big teams. Um, yeah, it's a very young goalkeeping core as well. I think James is an excellent keeper on his day, um, but can they keep it up a whole season? I'm not sure. But seventh, I think, wouldn't be too bad for Raiders. At number six, five and six, actually, are the two teams which I think could finish either fifth or sixth. I've got sixth Peterborough um, and then fifth Sheffield. Peterborough have lost a lot of um, a lot of players, including Billing, actually. But they have gained Luke Ferrara. Do you think Luke Ferrara will hit that 100-point mark, Dan? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, uh, he, he's had a solid... He, he's an elite league player, isn't he? Yeah. Like, he's literally... And he's coming down. He's Peterborough's topping... his place. Yeah. Um... I find it difficult to see someone hitting 100 points in the Slava system. But, um, you know. Yeah, yeah. but th- that could I, I change see. this year because he will be the main man. Um, so I'm not sure. It is, it's going to be interesting because defensively, I still think they've got one of the best defences in the league. But I, again, you need goals. I think, I think there's going to be a big need for them players to step up and get the goals. Saying that, they have got still got Duncan Spears. They've got um, Susters as well, who's had a season under his belt. Again, they don't have the third import, though. Um, you think Stepanek's going to come back, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. Two weeks. Two, one week, maybe before the podcast being announced, Stepanek will be their import. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to see. They're, they are apparently on a low budget um, compared to a lot of teams, so who knows if they'll bring a third import. And then at five, I've got Sheffield. This could be a bit of a shock, because They've lost. Um, they've lost. Was it Wood in charge? Uh, that's Wood. Yeah, Red Wood. And yeah, is Kewitt going to be good? Do you reckon, Dan? Do you think he's going to be able to take on that coaching role as a player coach? I mean, Ben Wood, uh, uh, Greg, Greg Wood, Wood. I mean, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, I think I think it's a lot. Like it's a lot to fill. You know, I think I think he was solid, and obviously he's been with Sheffield a while as well as a player. Yeah. Like, I think he was a player when I first started watching in yeah, like 2012. Yeah. So and he's great. He's grown up through like Sheffield, and I feel, I think I think he'll do all right. He's a good player anyway. But yeah, I think the new coaching role it might it is it's still a lot to learn, isn't there? But obviously he's play he's played under Wood and he know he knows how he's played and he he can maybe pass that over to the players that he's obviously in charge of now. Yeah, a lot of the players know Hewitt. Like they played with him last season, so. They'll they'll know what he wants to do as a coach, I guess. But and he did yeah, win the treble as a coach with Hull. So um, he did, yeah, actually. He's got that record as a coach. Yeah, it yeah, was you, in the. You don't, you... Go on, Dan. So you don't, you don't really like remember him as a coach, to be honest. But no. like when you think of like how good Hull were, like back when in the whole pirate days and stuff like that, it's you, you never know really because the Sheffield team can definitely do it and. Yeah. It's a, it could go either way this season. They, they haven't got a third import, have they? Uh, no, yeah. not, yet, not yet. They don't. They have she Phillips. They look into it. Did he? Yeah. Okay, that'll it's be interesting. Interview. Phillips is going to be great for them defensively. I think defensively, Sheffield are going to be a rock this year. They got the goalkeeping duo of Zamosha and Cry. I've seen everyone banging on about that, and I I got to agree. It does look very very strong. It's probably, would you say it's the strongest goalkeeping core in the league? Yeah. He, yeah, I feel, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen a lot of people talking about Crow and how well he's been doing in the preseason. Yeah. I know preseason is nothing to go by, but obviously it's always good signs if your backup goalie's doing well. It takes the pressure off some Milster as well if he needs a few yeah. games rest because it's going to be a long season. Um, into the top four of my predictions then at fourth I've got Hull. Now I was impressed with McLaughlin. I think it's really good to have a base goalkeeper, and despite them finishing bottom. McLaughlin, I thought, was good when when he could be because he faced so many shots. Um, they've got Bartholomew, they've got Barmer, they've got Barry. So I think defensively, they're going to be all right. And then forward core is just the top two lines, especially. I think it's going to be lights out. Bobby Chamberlain's already getting on the goals and yeah, he's going to settle straight back in. Bonner, I think we could see a big season from him. They've got that input. What's his name, Charlie? Bartholomew. Um, Bob- no, Bobby Young, the forward. No. Bobby he Young, he's good. Yeah, he's going to be good. I forgot <laughs> his name. But no, um, I think Hull, I think Hull finish fourth, and then in number three, I've got Leeds. Now, I think 
the Knights are always going to be good. When you have Kieran Brown um, on your team, you're going to get points, but they have lost Shudra. Um, do you think that's going to be a big effect for them this season, Dan? Even dropping to fourth or fifth? Or... Yeah, I think... I don't, I don't want to obviously... I'm not, I'm not saying anything too big, but I don't think they're as good as they were last season. No, I, I think th- last season is going to be a very big season to follow. Um, obviously, they had a very successful season. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Shooter is gone. They've got three brand new imports to the league. Yeah. Obviously, it's there's a lot of changes to a team that was working last year. And yeah. I think, and they haven't got Hazel Dean either. No, no, they haven't. Um, but in, again, it can go either way. You know I mean, you've got Ryan Aldridge as coach, like. Yeah, and anything. gospel. You've still got gospel. I think yeah. that's huge. If they'd have got, if they hadn't got gospel this year, um, I think they would have struggled a lot. But they've got that goalkeeper they can just rely on in some of the games. Um, so I do and think I, they'll finish third. Go on, Dan. And I, and I think last season, I think one of their weakest points were was the defense. Mm. Obviously, you've got gospel, but in front of them, like I think that was a really good move from them getting in that import D man because yeah. I think I think that's a really big thing that they needed last season was just a solid. D man, yeah. like they've got a lot of young D men that which did really good from obviously, but I think bringing in that import will be a really good experience for the players around them. They didn't, they didn't have Hazel Dean for the whole season last season, and when you have that no. import D man who you can just rely on, I think that's they, it is going to benefit them in a good way. But again, a lot of changes, so that's why I've gone with third. I don't think they're going to retain the title, and then one and two, MK and Swindon. I could, obviously my bias. I'd I'd love Swindon to win it. Sorry, but pure depth. I've got MK to win the league. Um, I just think they've got too many good players. Like their their third line is probably better than a lot of teams' first and second line, or better than their second line. So yeah, their depth is a joke. I think the intro, introduction of Soldier is key for them because he's just that D-man they can rely on. Herman's a joke, we know that. I think Dylan Lawrence is the sentiment they've been looking for. Swindon, though, I do think we can win the league. Obviously, I'm a bit biased. I'm really positive. Charlie, do you think we got a chance without spoiling your predictions? <clears throat> got a chance, that's for sure. We definitely have a chance. Dan, do you think Swindon have got a chance to win it? <laughs> um, as a Bison fan, I mean, I know Swindon always get to the end and then the, the wheels fall off. Yeah. Um, but I think this season, this season, the, the games that I've watched, obviously, I've seen both Swindon games at the weekend. Yeah. And I think you, def- you definitely do look solid going into the season. And I think if you can retain that for the whole season, you never know. But at the same time, obviously, you're going up against some top teams with MK as well. Yeah, I, th- so. I just can't, I can't go against the depth of MK. And I think the defence isn't actually going to be too bad for Swindon. We'll see in uh, my little predict- five question predictions here. Um, but yeah, I just think MK will have enough to do it and get it over the line. Injuries as well. If they get injuries, they've got the depth to cover. Saying that, forward-wise, Wildcats do have very good depth. Um, and I think Headley and Marr, it could actually be the battle between them two in terms of which goalkeeper can stand on his head the most and single-handedly get him through games if they're not playing at the level they should. Um, so, yeah, I've gone with MK to win it. I hope Swindon can do it. I believe they can do it. Um, and it's just who can get that consistency throughout the season and win the games, which maybe they shouldn't win. Um and then let's move, Dan. let's move on to Dan. Well, uh, should we do our little questions at the end then? The yeah, we'll do all questions. the questions as a five. Okay, together. Dan, do you want to go for, from your 11th to <laughs> first rankings? Um, I know it's okay. very tough. All right. So, rock bottom, I've got the Bristol Pitbulls. Okay. There's my rock bottom team. I think um, last season, obviously, they struggled. Obviously, it's first time in the league. It's, yeah. They're going to struggle. Um, this season, They've obviously got a lot of players that shocked us last year. Um, yeah. And they obviously, they're coming into the league as obviously people know about them. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't really see any like improvement, like major improvements, if you, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Obviously, they brought in some good young players. They seem to always go for the young players. That seems to be the way they like to do it. Um, obviously, bringing in Lydia as well, which brings up the... Brings up the age. <laughs> do, but, do you um, think? Do you think the having too many youngsters could 
could be a negative in a way that um, they don't have, quite have as much experience to get to playoffs. Yeah, I think I think having a young roster is good and bad. I think obviously you, you're young, you're fiery, you want to make your name for yourself. You want to you want to be showing everyone that you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the energy as well. You'll always have the energy. You'll always be pumped for the games. Yeah. And um, but at the same time, obviously, going to them big games like the big games in MK or even Swindon, like the big teams, like they're they're gonna be they're gonna be nervous. Yeah. Like even as a fan, you're nervous. <laughs> so they're gonna be on the ice and they're gonna be seeing all the crowd around them. And I think I think that's gonna just be too much for them. And I I couldn't imagine them being on the big stage. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I get that. Uh, um, who's, who's, num- who's number 10 in your list? Who have you got them missing number out 10, as well? Number 10, I've got the Bs. Okay. Is that similar? Think, yeah, I mean, like I was saying to Charlie in the off-season, I said they haven't really got... Like, they've got some good players, but they haven't got enough of them. Yeah. Like, you've got, obviously, your top line. Obviously, they're the scorers. But then you, you look down the list, and who is there, really, that, yeah. that's going to... Like grab a lot of points. You yeah. always got goodbye. The the big names goodbye, and Antonov. Uh, you got Antonov. Yeah, but obviously he's only home game games. Yeah. Well, maybe a few away games. You've got Balaz. He's not really. He's not really a goal scorer. He's yeah. more of an assister and a playmaker. Holds the puck, and then you just re- and then from down there you've got grinders. You've got Landsberg. So he's he's a solid youngster as well. Obviously he had a really good season for Bison last year. Um, hopefully he does carry that on because I think he deserves yeah. he deserves to have a chance and he, he deserves the ice time. Morris is another grinder as well. Yeah, and they're, they're good for the grinding and they might grind out wins, but I think the things that wins you games is the goals and I don't really see where they're going to get that from. And okay. maybe a few injuries that could yeah. obviously also hurt them as well. Who have you got missing and, out? Because this is the big spot and this is what I'm interested in. <laughs> this is the one that made everyone look when I told you. I've got number nine, Solway Sharks. Oh, <laughs> some fans are not going to like that. I know, I know. But What's your I reasoning think... though? Because we spoke about this at the we- uh, weekend. So just briefly give your couple reasons why. I mean, a new team again. Bristol yeah. Bristol and Hull had it last season and they didn't make it. Yeah. A new team to the league. They've got again a lot of youngsters from the league below. Yep. Obviously, I'm not saying they can't perform and they can't do it. They brought in some a good player with obviously Dunbar, Peacock, Barry McKenzie. Yeah. I know a Fife fan, and he said that Barry McKenzie will definitely light the league up. Yeah. Um, and obviously Dunbar's proved it that he can as well. But I think the fatigue of the away games. Yeah. And uh, long long travels. Like they, their closest away game is obviously Leeds, and that's three hours thirty away. Yeah, like they're going to be coming to games and they're going to be they're going to be having bus legs, and it, it, they they might be really good at home. Like I know you were saying before, but if you win all your home games, but no away games, you're not you're not going to get many points. Yeah, and that, uh, you need to be consistent throughout the league. Yeah, and, and they got they got a lot of they got a lot of new players as well coming up from the league, and it's going to be their first season in their NHL one. So I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they do miss out as well. And I don't think they should be too disappointed because no. it is a first season as well. So yeah, uh, that's that's what I mean. I don't I don't think if they didn't make playoffs, they would be annoyed. I think they just want to settle themselves in the league. Then next season, they'll really go for it as whole as this season. Yeah, hundred percent. Who have you got just making the playoffs and in eighth? I've got Telford Tigers. Okay, so we got mine, mine and yours switch reversed. Yeah, I think okay. obviously Tel- Telford have brought in like some young players. Obviously, <laughs> they normally go with the older ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, so bringing in some young young blood's good. Um, and obviously Tom Watkins, he always brings it out of the bag at the end of the season. Yeah, like they can they could go on like a ten game losing streak like last season, and then all of a sudden defeat MK to make it to the playoffs. Yeah, like, it it, it's it, it's weird how they do it, but I mean it's it's obviously it obviously works for them. If you get to Coventry, no one cares yeah. how you make it there. <laughs> That's one thing I might regret saying, just because they have Tom Watkins in charge. So putting them uh, out of the playoffs could bite me bite me on the ass. <laughs> um, who have you got in seven? Uh, we'll do seventh, sixth, and fifth because I think those three. Yeah. The, so the in the seventh, I've got the Steel Dogs. Okay. In in sixth, I've got Raiders. Yeah, and in fifth, I've got Peterborough. 
Okay. Is that similar reasons to, to what I said as well? Yeah, I think I think Raid, Raiders will definitely be up there. They'll definitely win some games. Obviously, they beat in Peterborough twice in a row at the moment. Yeah. But again, it's preseason, and Peterborough are a hard team to beat, especially in their rink. Yeah. Um, they're obviously going to be grinding out games. Obviously, bringing in Milton and Norcliffe, you know, by some boys, they're going to <laughs> they're going to be making an impact. Yeah. Um, and then obviously bringing in the D man as well. Their um their new young import that Nick Leia. Nick Lair, yeah, we gave him uh, Player yeah. of the Week last week well, for the pre-seasons. Yeah. Yeah, he looked good. Yeah, I, th- I think he looks exciting. I think he'll be a really good addition to the team. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll I'll go on to him as well later on, I think, as well. So. Okay. And then, oh. uh, <laughs> what's your... Uh, you've said... Uh, so, what was that? So, seventh, you've got um, Sheffield. Is that just because they've, yeah. they've lost a couple of players and... Yeah, they've lost a few them. big names. Yeah. And, I mean, they they'll be mid table. I think yeah. they'll they'll win games. They'll lose games. If I think those they're, three they're, teams they're... you said, well, any of them could finish any of the mid table. Really. Yeah, it, it was hard. It was hard with them ones. That was the ones I was really sort of thinking about a lot. Yeah. Okay, who have you got fourth then? Just missing out uh, on the top three. I've changed this recently. I literally changed it yesterday. Okay. I put um I put Hull in fourth. Okay. I did have them in third. Oh wow. <laughs> But I've moved them down. Okay, I and I'm, thought, assu- I'm assuming you've switched them with whoever's third then. So who have you got third as well? Yeah, I've got Leeds in third. Okay, nice. So originally I had Leeds in fourth. And I was mm. I was thinking to myself, I was like, are Hull really going to do better? And I think I think they will definitely, they'll definitely be fighting for that third spot. Yeah. Because obviously they brought in some really good players. Obviously Chamberlain, Bonner, like you said, like they're going to, they're gonna be one. They're they're back in their back in their place, aren't they? They're gonna yeah. be they're gonna be happy there. And uh, Bartholomew as well. I really yeah. like the look of him. They uh, needed I the D the man, I think. Yeah, I saw the clips of him, and I think he looks like a really attractive player. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and then Bobby Young as well. Obviously, yeah. he's proved himself in a load of different leagues. Put him on the right line, and I think he'll score your points. It's yeah. one of them. They'll definitely be a um, playoff team. I think if we're looking at the playoffs, I think they could be ones on the off game to to shock you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. You won't want to be going against them in like an aggregate game. I don't think. No. If they take the lead away and then you go back to their place, obviously their place can be a bit of a yeah, a bit of a hard we've, place we've to got, go to. Swindon have got them away on the first weekend of the season. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm hoping to try and get to that. I think. Yeah, I hopefully think it'll be a good game. Me, me and Charlie should be there. So yeah, Who, right. Top two then. So you've got um, Leeds third. <laughs> Who's your top two? Go on. It's obviously I've, Swindon. I've, MK. I've, I've gone with the same as you. Swindon okay. in second. MK in first. I, Is similar I reasoning. Can, yeah, I literally I couldn't look past MK. If you look at their team, they are literally. They're unreal. Like, oh. <laughs> like for this league, the t- the players that they've got, yeah, they're unreal. They've literally and... they're gonna have like Cali Robertson on a third line, and what did he get? Sixty two points or even more for Bristol last season. Like it, it is yeah. actually a joke the depth they've got. Do yeah. you think all the players can stay happy though? Because they've got a lot of players. Do you think that could be a downfall on uh, MK? Uh, I mean, all these players they're gonna be wanting to fight for minutes, aren't they? Yeah. They're gonna be one in ice time, and I think if you can get the balance right, you'll get yeah. players out there that are fighting for their spot. They'll be yeah. putting their effort out 100 percent every time because they want to make they want to make a statement. If yeah. if you've got a team that they're like last season, you always, you had them that top six sort of sorted. Like yeah, no yeah. one was ever getting into that top six, but this year anyone can get into that top six. And I think obviously as a player, you want the most ice time. So you, every time you're on the ice, you're going to be wanting to prove a point. Okay, you're going to I be like, wanting to prove. To... I like that and point because you're making a pot. You're actually flipping it, so it could actually be a positive that they've got so much players, and they'll all play their best to get that that spot. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they'll be a very. They've always been a competitive team in the dressing room. Like you always see them on the bench, yeah. I like like talking to each other, and they're always pushing each other on. And I think if they all get on the same wavelength, they're all going to be wanting to push for their best. So, yeah. uh, and obviously, as a team, that's that's what you want. You want your players to be putting one hundred percent in. Yeah, fair enough. Well, that is Dan's predictions. Um, similar yeah. to mine, actually. Let's move on to Charlie's because yeah. I think he's going to have to go different. Charlie's going to have to go different, right? <laughs> he's Charlie, different. 
Kick us off with the three teams which are not going to miss, uh, which are not going to make the playoffs. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I take it in my pace, and let's get. All to right, the good we haven't got too long. We don't want to waffle too let's long. Let's get yet. to the good predictions. In eleventh, I've got bees. Um, okay. I don't think they have the firepower. I think their goalie will do really well. I think they've got a decent decor, but you can't win games if you don't score goals, in my opinion. And I just don't think they've got that in them. Okay. Uh, um. Tenth, I've got Bristol. Um, I actually think Bristol will do better than people think they will. I know I've put them tenth, but I think they'll get close to playoffs. I think they've got a really good forward core. I think they've got some top, top level defensemen, but then also some bottom end defensemen. I think they'll struggle in goal. And um, I think their forwards are just a bit young. Yeah. And then in ninth, I've put Solway. Oh, he's uh, put missing out as well. <laughs> so um I put Solway because I'm not putting Talford to miss playoffs. They won't okay. miss it. I just, I can't no. see it. And then there's no other team I can see missing playoffs. And Solway, they got a decent top five forwards. Well, decent, very good top five forwards. A decent top two defenseman. But apart from that, there's a lot of players there which have got massive question marks on them. And if them question marks do well, fair play to them. I think they'll, they'll, they'll thrive. But there's so many question marks in that team where it's like, I'm going to put them... Um, put them in ninth missing out in playoffs and um okay. i don't think that's a bad year for them though i really no. don't and i don't think it's a bad year for all three teams i think bees bristol and obviously solway they've got a lot better from last year bristol do- especially uh, they've got a young team so for the future as well those players if they stay obviously will then be the future of the league which same means with bees. yeah bees have got three defensemen in cages like They've got they've yeah. got a young talented team and I think um I think the future's bright for all three teams, especially Solway and Bristol. Um yeah. but in eighth, uh, I got Talford, Tigers, okay. uh, yeah. Tom Watkins is good. I think they'll bring in an MK player during the year. I'm not gonna predict two, but Ooh. I think they'll um have a MK player <laughs> who loses his head a bit and goes off to Talford. I think they'll sign off another player as well. And I just think Talford will grind away points. They'll get enough wins. Luca's got a good shot on him. Finley Howes is just improving. I think it's a big year for like Sam Watkins. They got that Scottish geezer as well up top. Um yeah. Patrick Ferguson. Uh they got Mitchell King as well at the back. So I think they're good. And they've got a goalie who can help Brad Day. And I yeah. think that's another key thing. Okay. Then we're going middle on pack. Uh, the middle pack. In seventh, I've got Peterborough Phantoms. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's a bit controversial. Uh, I put Peterborough there because um, I just think they've lost a lot of firepower. And I think they're going to have a struggled season. I, I may get proven wrong here, but the six teams above them, I think, are better. Um, <laughs> so um, it's a difficult one. I think there on is a paper mid-pack. they're better, but will they be better in terms of actually getting the results and grinding They've got a out really good wins. decor, Peterborough, which is why I'm sceptic to put them in seventh. Yeah. But I think the gap between seventh and fourth will be really close. I don't yeah. think the middle pack is seventh and fifth. Yeah. I think the middle pack is seventh and fourth. I don't think Hull will catch up with Leeds, Swindon okay. or MK. Fair enough. Um, then in um, sixth, I got Sheffield. Yeah. Uh, I really like the Sheffield team. Um, again, they've lost some big pieces. Obviously, sadly, Alex Graham, who passed yeah. away. But then they also lost other players like Busa and uh, another player. I can't remember Bonner. his name. Forward Bonner. Yeah. yeah. Um, they I reckon they will bring in a third import, and I think that will help them during the season. But I think uh they'll be really good at bringing out young talents. Tate Shudra, uh Oli uh, that Palmer, is it Oli Palmer? Palmer, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they'll do well. Bram will improve, uh Ollie Turner at D. And then Daniel Crow given some Modra rest. I think Chef will be a team you don't you, you don't want to play against. Yeah. Um, then in fifth, I've got Hull. Oh, okay. Um, an unpopular one again, but I really like Hull's top six uh, forwards. I think their top six forwards are great. We know that. I think their top four D men are great, but I think their third line D and third line forwards is weak in my opinion, for the league. I think they've got one of the weaker ends of the third line forwards. They've got Sam Toner, who could be a potential third line centre. But the wingers on each side, I think, are a bit um, bit on the dodgier end. And then I also uh, question their backup goalie. I don't know if they've really got a proper backup goalie. Mm -hmm. And a goalie who's got to play every game in this league, it either goes really well or they get tired and they burn out, a bit like Brad Day did last year. So, yeah, yeah, I've got Hull there, but um, I could see them easily getting fourth. And then fourth, wow. Raiders. Wow. Um, this Raiders team was the second best team in the league on form at the end of last year, potentially. Uh, they were one of the best teams in the league on form. And they added Zach Milton, George Norcliffe, and yeah. an import D-man. They're not messing about. 
Like they've added an import D man, one of the positions they needed the most, and they will. They've they've said they're bringing one in, and I believe it'll be good. It'll be Canadian, and it'll be sick. Then they're yeah. adding Zach Milton, one of the best young British players in this league. Then yeah. they're adding George Norcliffe. This team is stacked. They got one of the best forward cores in the league, probably top four in my my opinion in the league. They got good D core. I think they'll do very well. Okay, top three then. Third place, I got Leeds. Um, yeah. Uh, I like Leeds. I think their top six is unbelievable. I think they have got the best top six in the league still. Um, oh, really? Even yeah, without... Exactly. So who are you putting on that final top six spot? Archer, uh, Braden? James Archer or Braden, one of the two. But wow. when you've got Kieran Brown, Matt Cowlett, Matt Hayward, NCAA import, U Sports import, I think there's enough said there. There's three players there who would have got 100 points last year, plus an NCAA import and others. So I think they're still stacked in the forward core and they got a good goalie. And then in first place, I've got Swindon Wildcats. Um, you got oh, MK said how it is. Um, <laughs> Swindon Wildcats, in my opinion, uh, I'm just going to say what I actually think. I think we've got the best forward core in the league, balance-wise. I think MK, you can talk about all the talent in your world. We've got your Russell Cowleys one of the best two-way centres in the league on your third line. We've also got the Gail Labuelos, who got a season under their belt as an important this player. league. He's a player. He's going to snipe. <laughs> we've got Colby Tower, who can potentially even third line grind for Yeah, us. he might I be third We've got line. players who suit the roles they will play better than MK. Because I think we've got third liners who'll play third liners. Josh Shaw, a hungry 10th forward, who's not going to want to stay as a 10th forward. He's very good the pre-season. The question is, is our yeah. decor... Yeah, what, and our decor, decor is obviously going to be a question, but Luke Johnson, Eddie Bebris, Tyler Plews, and Jamie Smith are going to sit people down this year. I really believe it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've got us first and MK second. That's no doubt on them. But um, I okay. back my boy. I back wow. my team any day of the week. Because fair play. I hope you're right. Place. I really hope you're right. Um, let's move into our five questions. I got five quick fire questions. Where we'll do them and we'll go round not too long reasoning because we have to get onto the other interviews as well so top scorer starting with you Dan who's going to be the top scorer of the league I put Rory Herman nice okay nice. Charlie who have you got uh, I'll go last you go next I've got Rory Herman as well I think he's going to be the top scorer and he's going to be MK's yeah. uh, biggest player as well Charlie who have you got uh, what are they on about Kieran Brown's getting it three times in a row they're waffling again it. Uh, oh, I was I, I was close to putting Kieran Brown. Yeah, yeah, he's he's the I obvious thought, one. Yeah, right, I thought Herman. One. Yeah. All right. All right, player of the year, Dan. Who have you got? <laughs> I'll put Rory Herman again. Yeah, I've All right. right. <laughs> I've I've got Rory Herman, player of the year. But I would say Soldier, who I think's come in. I think he could be an unsung hero of player of the year, but they're never going to give it to a defenseman. So I think Rory Herman's going to be player of the year, um, but Soldier's going to be that unsung hero for MK as well. Charlie, who's your player of the year? Aaron now the top goal scorer in the league. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? oh, wow. Okay, so you think he's going to be the man who comes out of injury? Oh, wow. His operation just absolutely smash it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I can't go. I can't go against that. Fair enough. I, I think Aaron's going to have a, a nut season this year, and I really hope he does. Young player of the year, Dan. Come to you, and our young player is twenty years or younger. That's what we're doing. So, Dan, who's your young player of the year? Bailey Harewood. Okay, nice from Bristol. Even though you've put yeah. bottom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I know, but I think Bailey is an unreal player. Yeah. I think he's going to be wanting to make a name for himself this season. He's got Cardiff obviously on his doorstep. He, yeah. he's, he's said before the season he's going to be wanting to make a name for himself and he has to do it. Yeah. So, and he, he is a really good player. I liked him at Bayesley so when he played. He was only like 17. Yeah. And I don't think he got the chance he deserved, really. Yeah. I'm just kind of annoyed we uh, let him go. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, I'm glad he's doing good in Bristol anyway. <laughs> yeah, the fact he's still 20 is a joke. I've gone with Finley Braden. If he's going to get given that top six role for Leeds, I think he's going to absolutely tear it up um, with the players alongside him. If he's going to be playing with Kieran Brown or Hayward or Matt Cowlett. So I've gone with Finley Braden. Charlie, who's your uh, young player of the year? Uh, Bailey Harewood, again, he's... A- joke and he will yeah. tear up this league I, I still can't believe he's 20 years old which is nuts ones to watch for the whole league Dan who's your ones to watch for the whole league this is going to be a bit of a weird one I think yeah I've got Nick Layers yeah fair enough is think, any other think, reasoning behind that 
I think uh, for Raiders, he's a new type of import. I think yeah. if you look at their last three imports of P attack, Roberts and Gomesic, yeah. they're all above six foot one. Yeah. I think and obviously Laird's is five five foot nine. Yeah. And um I think it's definitely a different style that they've gone with this season. And I think I think it'll be he's still young, he's twenty three, I think. Yeah. And I think he's gonna shock a lot of people and I think it'll be a really good thing for uh, that MK team uh, for that Raiders team. Good shout. And if you haven't already, check the Nick Lair compilation from the team he was at in America. It's actually a really good compilation. I watched it earlier. I've gone with Eddie Bebris. I've gone with Bebris. I think he's going to sit so many people down. He may be an unre- unreal forward, and he is an unreal power forward. But defense- defensively, I think he's all you want in a big D-man. And I think he's going to sit so many people down. I think he's going to have an excellent season. So I've got Eddie Bebris as my one to watch. Charlie, who's your one to watch? Matt Cowlett, um, I really like him. Um, he's a beast and he will tear up the league again. Fair enough. And our final little question, we haven't got long. Dan, what's your unpopular opinion for this season? I mean, I think we all know what it is. I put Solway Sharks will not make the yeah. playoffs. I think I think it has to be that. I think yeah. a lot of people are gonna gonna be annoyed, but people might agree. <laughs> yeah, my unpopular opinion, again, it's linked to my ones to watch. I think Edgar Bebris and Luke Johnson are going to be some of the top D-men in the league this season. Um, Even though they haven't originally been defensemen, I think they're going to be top D-men for Swindon. I think we will win a trophy, whether that be the uh, the league, the playoffs or the cup. I think they're going to be a big role in that and they're going to prove a lot of people wrong. Charlie, what's your unpopular opinion for this season? Here we go. Renny Ma will be the best goalie in the National Hockey League. Nice. I like that. That's a good one. What do you think, Dan, about that? <laughs> I mean, he's definitely got it. Yeah. He's definitely got it in him. Uh, obviously, Headley is always a battle he's going to be going up against. But, yeah. I mean, no, he's you never battling know. gospel these days. Not not Headley. He's going to I think gospel's going to have an unreal season. I think he's going to be a big part. But yeah. I also think Rennie Mars going to be really good this season. I think defensively, Swindon will be a lot better than people think. Um, We'll move on to the other interviews we uh, with Martin and my dad. We'll play them now. Hello and welcome back. I'm joined by my dad. How are you doing, dad? <laughs> I'm good, thank you, Jackers. Not bad at all. Your first <laughs> appearance on here. Um, how did you come into hockey, first of all, and what do you love the most about ice hockey? Uh, how did I come to hockey? Um, oh, it must have been about nine, ten years ago. A mate of mine <laughs> said, come along, um, bring your son, which is you, um, <laughs> nine, ten years ago, uh, watch this thing called ice hockey. So we went and we stood behind the goal, rinkside, um, and we were hooked from then onwards, I think. Um, <laughs> it was great. Never really seen it before, but was just hooked at the speed, uh, the skill, and, uh, yeah, just the physicality of it. Um, it was so much quicker than football. Uh, loved it. Yeah. So from then onwards, well... We've not missed a game. Well, we've tried not to miss a game since. Um, who's your favourite Who's yeah. your favorite player from Swindon then? Um... <sighs> <sighs> who's my favourite player from Swindon? Um uh dear me um i i think i think uh in the earlier days i think um Janus Hoog, uh yeah, Hoog. and and also Jan Kostel i think from work ethic and just sheer strength um yeah. and determination in the game uh was 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 fantastic yeah and and to be fair i know you know Malazinski has always been yeah. uh, a, a quality individual um yeah. He, he is out of this world um, and yeah. this season is shaping up to be probably one of the most competitive seasons um, and you're going to give you some of your predictions. Um, we'll That's start right. off. Um, who do you think is going to struggle to make playoffs this year? Ooh, um, okay. I think, I think you're right. It's going to be massively competitive. I think the teams that are going to be challenged to make it uh, are going to find it challenging. I think I'm going to put bees in there. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, and possibly Bristol, yeah, Telford, Galway. Mm-hmm. There's four. I think you know, um, three of those. I think will struggle to make playoffs. Telford, Bees, Bristol, Solway. But I, I just think there's going to be a surprise somewhere yeah. along the line. It's um, could could one of those teams shock and even even a big team could even drop like Sheffield or Peterborough because they haven't I got think- a third import yet. 
Yeah, I think I think I think uh, I think it's an eagerly anticipated season because there's lots of changes this season, and I think there's going to be some uh, some surprises. Um, uh, and I think it's especially towards the end of the season, uh, there's going to be some real battles, especially if it's close at the bottom of that league. Yeah. There's going to be some classic battles, and, and I think the top team are going to. Gonna, 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 gonna um, see the bottom teams really playing hard against them if they are fighting to stay in the playoff position. So that's and, gonna be cracking. But, and you've mentioned yeah. as well, you think um, it could massively depend on injuries as well this season on the big teams um, and the big players part of those teams. I think it is. I think um, we've seen it in previous seasons. Um, you know, uh, there are some key players in every team, and if and if they are out the game for two or three weeks. Um, and bearing in mind, it's going to be even more competitive and even 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 harder um, in some of the games. Uh, the physicality is going to increase. I think that could play a part. I really do. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. Who's near be, the top then? So which teams do you think are going to be the ones which are actually going to compete for um, the league? Because yeah, there's quite a few yeah. teams that okay. should improve their squad. Yeah, yeah. I think I think. Um, I think on paper and looking at the, the depth of the squad, um, and I think a lot of people will 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 look at it and go, yeah, um, Milton Keynes. I do yeah. think the strength that they've got in their squad is 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 phenomenal, and I think it's good for the league. Um, you know, it stretches the league. Uh, so Milton Keynes. I also think that um, uh, Leeds are going to be there as well. Um, yeah, even though uh, they've lost think, a few players. Yeah, they lost a few few players um they've gained a few um i think it's about how the team connects um as a team um you know it's a cliche phrase and i think swindon again we you know we look at the team on paper each year and go wow um and then and then you think what well, you know you play teams in the pre-season you think Do you know what? it's tougher than i thought yeah. um but i think see uh swindon should be up there i think top three milton Keynes, uh swindon leads yeah um but you know never ever, off ever. Raiders. Yeah, you, we'll come to that in a bit. Um, so yeah, you think Milton Keynes will win it purely on depth, but it's a competitive season. Anything yeah, could go. Purely on depth, but also skill. I think they've got yeah. they've got they've got really skillful players. Um, um, t- uh, Tim Wallace has recruited well. Yeah. Um, Considering uh, he lost a lot of players. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll get on to the five quick fire questions which I've got for you, and uh, <laughs> you've you pre-written them down. So we'll start yep. with who do you think will be the player of the season come the end of the season? Right. I reckon um, for me, it's between um, uh, Ross Venus and Rory Herman. So you think they're going to gone be... with someone from the top of the league? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, that's who I'm going to go for. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, leading on from that, who do you think will be the top point scorer in the league? Sorry, just going back to the previous one. I think Player of the Year, providing Rory Herman stays with Milton Keynes for the whole season. Oh wow, yeah. Maybe so get headhunted for one of the elite teams. I don't know. But, Depends um, how good he yeah. does. Yeah, point scorer. Did you say? Yeah. Top point scorer. I think points top scorer. I'm going to go with Matt Howlett. Yeah. Um, his I points think, per know, game, Rory... his points per game were near the top um, last yep. season, and he only had half a season. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go. For, I'm going to go for Matt Howlett. Yep. Nice. And your young player of the year, twenty or under. Okay, so um, yeah, young player of the year. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to cheat here a little bit. So forwards, I think uh, Bailey Harewood, Bristol. Yeah. Um, uh, just on the pre-season, we had the, the privilege of seeing him. Very skillful, very quick, um, and he's going to cause havoc. And I think he will be a young player of the season if he remains and doesn't get headhunted. Yeah. Um, Josh Shaw from Swindon, I think, again, in the pre-seasons from what I've seen, uh, pretty pretty cool. Um, and I think also Jamie Smith, our, our young D-man. Yeah, I think good. the opportunities he's got, to play with top quality against, you know, defending against top quality uh, forwards and even more top quality forwards, I think is phenomenal experience for him. And based on what I saw last year um, and his coolness and calmness, I think he could yeah. be young player of the year. 
Yep, I, I agree with that. Um, he plays like he's in his mid-20s. He's just so calm yep. on the puck. Um, ones yep. to watch then for the whole season. I know you've mentioned a few players, but who's yep. the the ones yep. to watch for who for you who you're looking forward to seeing? Um, yeah, I think um, uh, Solway coming into the league, um, really good. I think um, uh, Dunbar, is it John Dunbar? Yeah, John Dunbar, yeah. yeah. John Dunbar, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, John Dunbar, I think, you know, massive opportunity there and um, uh, ones ones to watch. And I'd also go for the Bristol young net net minder, uh, Ben Norton. Yeah, um, he looked really I good against us the other day. Could be, yeah, he was good against us. But again, the, the you know, if he lives up to the the, uh, the reputation he's got and the potential he's got, he's going to be a, a, a real corker for Bristol. That's why when I said about the, the bottom four, yeah. I think I think if he's on fire and he's got Smithler's backup or vice versa, I think those 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 last few games of the the, the season to, to 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 make a playoff position they could be crucial. So I think players to watch there. Yeah, and then finally to end it, an unpopular opinion or an opinion you have on the league. Um, so yeah, yeah, I um, yeah I think um, we will see. Um, uh, uh, some frustration come through um, when players are given a match ban. Yeah, a game um, or match ban on Saturday. Yeah, and it's not reviewed Saturday night, so they miss the Sunday game. Yeah, and I think I think that will be something that will frustrate teams, and and I think the the refs um, um, they need support because um, if they're gonna if they if they believe. They're gonna they're, they're gonna give those penalties out for what they see. Uh, fair play, um, but I think um, be fair to the players. I think there should be an opportunity for that to be reviewed on Saturday night. I know it's tight, but yeah. I think the professionalism of the league now means that I think we have to support the players and support the reps, um, and they need to be reviewed on a Saturday night. If they're not, I think it will have an impact on the Sunday. I think it's going to create yeah. frustrations. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's and I, and I think the other the other thing I would say is I think injuries. Yeah. I think if a player is injured, that is going to have a, a, a an Im- impact um, uh, on on being in the playoffs or not. And I think that's where the yeah. frustrations. Will be. Yeah, that's, so, yeah I, that's I, I I agree with that. And you also mentioned earlier you think the Raiders could cause a shock. Are those like your surprise team for the I, season? Yeah, I think I think Raiders. I uh, I sort of love and hate going to Raiders. Um, <laughs> I like watching them play other teams. Um, and I think based on what they did last year, which was incredible, and it was really, really good to watch, I think uh, they've, they've, um, they, they've smelt uh, uh, um, uh, victory and, and opportunities. And I think that will propel them. And they've season. improved so, yeah, their well, squad as well. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think it will be a, a, a tough old gig playing Raiders. And I think if there's, again, like any team, if there's consistency with their, their, their playing and their results... They could be a, a shock team. All right. Thank so, you yeah. for hopping on, and uh, we'll see come the end of the season whether those predictions are true. <laughs> All right, Spratters. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you later. Cheers, yeah. bud. Hello, and welcome back. I'm joined by my good friend Martin. Martin, how are you doing this morning? Yeah, not bad, mate. Busy night with the baby and everything, and uh, my yeah. missus is there. So uh, about about two or three hours sleep last night, but except for that, all, all good, mate. <laughs> forward to doing this with you today oh, i appreciate you hopping on um but before we get into your predictions just let everyone know uh how you got into hockey i can see you got a few nhl jerseys behind you um but how did you get into the english ice hockey world oh well it was my um 34th birthday um i i've been saying to my missus for ages like oh let's go to america let's go to canada and do a hockey tour which we were lucky enough to do last year yeah. sort of around canada but for my 34th birthday, she researched about uh, Swindon Wildcats. They're the closest team to Gloucester, where I live. And uh, yeah, yeah, but just uh, she got me a jersey as well, which is uh, signed by the team. Um, I think it was, well, the uh, season and a half ago now. Yeah. Uh, behind. And uh, yeah, she got us that. And ever since, well, obviously met you and just kept going. Like, you know, it's, it was, it's, it's been, been really fun. It was quite uh, quite funny, actually. So we were literally in the queue waiting to go into the, uh, the rink before the game. And... Um, Paul Norbury, uh, someone who works with the Wildcats, introduced us, didn't he? And then um, yeah. I th- uh, after the game, I thought I'd never see you again. And then I saw you at another game and then found out you lived in Gloucester. And then we take each other to the games now. So yeah. well, The other thing was as well, it was the, the Super Bowl. 
Oh you yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was the, good. So the Eve Nights game, and uh, you you were in Cheltenham at the same time, sort of thing, and we, we got chatting a bit more then, and yeah, yeah just becoming into... mates out of that. Yeah, that was good. But yeah, now we're really good mates, and uh, yeah, well, you're going to give us your hockey prediction, so we'll get straight yeah. into it. Oh, sorry, quickly, who's your favourite player then? Because I know you have a favourite player who doesn't now play for Swindon, but who's your favourite player? <laughs> Uh, Declan Barber, man. He, he is just the man. He is just the man. He's just, uh, yeah, just a, a, an absolute force in defence. I mean, he, he was my favourite player in Swindon when he was there. And um, the minutes he played last season, man, he, I, I look at his like Instagram and like all the fitness he does and everything. And yeah. he was racking up like 40 minutes a game last season. Yeah. Right? It's, just yeah, he's he's an absolute force. I I, I have got a, good, a lot of time for Barmer. Yeah, yeah, we love Barmer. We we definitely miss yeah. him as well. That kind of player. Um, but yeah. let's let's start near the bottom then. So the teams who you think are going to be battling out for that eighth position because three teams this season have got to miss playoffs. I know it's a very difficult um prediction list, but who have you got near the bottom battling it out? Well, uh, so down near the bottom, sort of. Um, I think Solway are going to need some time. Like I, I yeah. don't particularly think they're going to be able to do too much this year. Um, again, I don't particularly know too much about them. In all yeah, honesty. they're kind of a mystery, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. You know, and obviously being quite new to the league and everything, it'd be interesting to see what they do. So my next three teams up from that, I've got uh, the Bees, uh, Bristol and Telford. Okay, um, yeah. So I think it's going to be sort of between them to sort of get the final playoff spot. Yeah. Um, again, we went to Bristol the other night uh, at the away preseason game, and they they, they gave us a, a good really game. Good game. Uh, yeah, a lot of penalties from Swindon, but yeah. um, you know, it, 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 again, between Telford and Bristol, that it could be one or the other. To be honest, like, yeah, there, there's definitely going to be a shock this season. I think uh, a lot of people yeah. have pr- got the similar predictions. Um, yeah. And I think there's going to be a massive shock. And my dad actually said he thinks there's going to be a shock, whether that's Bristol who finished really high up the league or, yeah. or whatever. So um, let's move on then. Who do you think is going to be near the top of the league um, battling it out to win win the whole competition? Okay, so I'll, I'll do my top five. Yeah. Um, so I've got uh, Pell in fifth. Yeah. I think they're going to do really well this season. Uh, I've got Sheffield in fourth. Okay, yeah. I've got Swindon third. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, give me your reasoning in a minute. Yeah, I've got Leeds second and I've got MK Lightning first. Okay, so you think MK are going to win the league. What's your reasoning behind uh, Milton Keynes taking the victory? I think just the experience that they've got in there now, I think with with their, with their top line, uh, getting Herman in as well, I think yeah. he's going to be an absolute force this season. Yeah. I really think that they can they can push on this season and and sort of break the hoodoo of the the last couple of seasons yeah, yeah. and get the win. Yeah, and um, you've got Sheffield up in fourth. Is that pure just the experience of the team playing together? They got a good defensive core. They got depth in goalkeeping now. Yeah, and and we always seem to not do too well against them as well. Yeah. Sort of thing, you know, so it's sort of like. I, I think that I think they've got a good call. I know it's their their manager left, didn't they? Where well, yeah, Greg Wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boys, they're they're a good set of boys there, and yeah, a, a good core team that they've got there. And um, what's your reasoning for Swindon in third? Do you think we'll just run out of steam near the end? I think so. I think playoffs it, it, it's a must this season for Swindon fans. Yeah. We, look, we, we've got to be in Coventry this year, um, but I just think Leeds. You know, with with sort of Kieran Brown and um, you know um, Howlett and players yeah. like that, yeah, and and MK Lightning, like I, I just can't see us getting above third, to be honest. Yeah, I hope. You know, I so hope we can. Still pessimistic. I think I think it's going to be a really good season for Sweden. Yeah. With with um, Labuelle coming in, Billing's going to be a very important player for us this season yeah. as well. Uh, but I just I just think that they're just a little bit above us at the moment. Yeah, they have got top, top players. And um, yeah, I think MK, I've put in my predictions, MK are going to win the league as well. I think their depth is just unbelievable. Um, We'll get into the five quick fire questions then. So the first one is, who do you think will be player of the year? Um, If you've got a couple of players, you can name them, but at the end of the day, we need one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's got to be Kieran Brown. He can, he can do everything. He's just, you know, top point scorer. Yeah. He, can Michigan, he can, he can do what he wants on the ice rink, you know. I, yeah. I, I really think he's he's going to smash it again, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's, it's got it's got to be Kieran Brown for me. And similar with the wait, was that for top point score or player of the year? Oh, that'd be. Um, I think it's going to be both, mate. <laughs> both, yeah. In all fairness, mate, he is yeah. a joke. He looks like yeah. a joke in preseason as well, and. Um... Yeah, if it could could he help Leeds to get the back to back? We'll have to see. Um, who do you yeah. think will be the young player of the year? Then um, we've capped it at twenty years and younger. Okay, um, so I've got a D man and an offensive. Yeah, I really like Martelli of MK. Uh, yeah. I've been watching him the last couple of seasons. I think he's he's quite silky on the ice, quite fast as well. Like, I, and yeah. uh, I think he played for. Did he play for Streatham at Coventry? Yeah, he as did. Well? Yeah, yeah, for did. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I've always been a big fan of him. Uh, but I've got to go for our Josh Shaw uh, yeah. at Swindon. Um, pre-season, wow, what a player. Um, yeah. I think he's developed his game at Bristol a bit. And, uh, you know, just a couple of goals in pre-season as well. He got two yeah. and he was, he's, he was nearly... Did he did he score it? Um, did he score away when we, when we yeah. watched it? He uh, well. Yeah, he did. He went he did. straight in front of the keeper, flicked it in, yeah. That's it, yeah. So uh, I think I think he's one for the future for Swindon. I'm I'm glad he's back. Yeah, he's only 17 as well, still, which nice. is just nuts. And he he Crazy. plays like he's in his mid 20s, just like Jamie Smith. So yeah, that's a really good uh, really good shot. I think my dad mentioned him as well to be someone to watch this year. Um, yeah. Who is your ones to watch? Who's the player who you're looking forward to watching this season? It's got to be uh, ex Wildcat Emil Speck. Nice. Um, so last season, obviously, they had problems with getting the imports in. Yeah. Whole, and then he had a a 10-game suspension. <sighs> uh, so, you know, it, he played 31 games. I think he got 31 goals and 30 yeah, assists. a goal per game, yeah. It was crazy. And with the likes of Chamberlain coming across from MK, Bonner coming across from Sheffield, I think he can just go from strength to strength. I think yeah. he's he's going to smash it this It takes a well. bit of pressure off his shoulders, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, that's one thing we do miss is his slap shot. You know, yeah, he's, he's got one of the hardest shots I've ever seen. And yeah. to finish it off, what is your like, uh, your like, not an unpopular opinion, your bold prediction for the season? Okay, uh, bold prediction is that Hull are going to go away, either winning um, the cup, yeah, or or a cup, or they're going to get to the playoffs, uh, and they're going to get to the final of the playoffs. Nice. Season. You think they're going to be that playoff team yeah. who's got the big? Yeah. Bobby Chamberlain loves the playoff. He he won it with Hull a few seasons ago, so I can fully yeah, back that prediction. Yeah. Um, but yeah. hopefully, um, Swindon can go and win it this season. <laughs> oh, fingers crossed. Well, it'd be nice to get to Coventry again, and this it's always yeah. a good laugh with. You know, it's always a good atmosphere, and the thing that I love about our league is how sort of intimate it is. Like, it, yeah. it, 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 it is, it is a niche. You know, yeah. it is. Uh, I, I absolutely love it because of that. You know, yeah. And uh, you're going to try and get to some games, and maybe near the end of the season, we'll bring uh, the baby along as well. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, I've got got Archer's little jersey behind number twenty three. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're tr- we're trying to get him to a game or two, but. Maybe in sort of 17, 18 years' time, I can see him being a D-man for Swindon anyway. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you hopping on, Martin. And uh, hey, no yeah, worries, man. We'll, see, we'll see you next weekend or whenever you come next. Nice one. Take it easy, bud. Cheers. Thank you very much, Martin and Dad, Ian, for hopping on to give their predictions. Um, We appreciate you tuning in. Make sure to get in the comments. Comment your predictions at us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Dan, thanks for hopping on, and uh, we'll see you a lot this season. No worries. Yeah, you will be. <laughs> We're going to try I think and get a lot of fans will. <laughs> yeah. We're going to try and get down a lot on the episodes because he's going to watch loads of games and I just think it'll be nice to have uh, another person on for for quite a few of the the podcast. Charlie, thanks for hopping on as well. And uh yeah, let us know your predictions for this season um and we'll be doing loads of posts throughout the season. So we'll see you in a bit. Peace. Yeah. See you later.